The athletic world is filled with superstar talents who sometimes undergo illness. But these illnesses stretch farther than just physical injury. Hi, I'm Emily Pratt from the David Brinkley Studio at Barry University, and this is Community Crossroads. The rise of athletes' death due to mental illness has increasingly focused on depression, and it seems the conditions that lead to depression among athletes is somewhat different than the rest of society. I took a look at what college athletes are going through. Athletes are often idolized for their superior athletic skills and talents. When they take on their opponent, fans can catch a glimpse of these stars performing what they do best. But while fans are watching what is happening on the outside, they are unaware of what could be happening to an athlete on the inside. Mental health issues such as depression can affect anyone, and athletes are no exception. According to the National Institute of Health, one in ten Americans suffer from depression. Although specific statistics on athletes with depression have been difficult to calculate, athletes have unique factors that can lead to mental health issues. Injuries, playing time, and performance issues can contribute to depression. Being hurt especially just causes so much emotional distress on you. It takes you completely out the game. You feel like you can't you know, make an impact on a team, like you're no longer contributing to the team. It's very hard because I, as an athlete, give it my all every single training session. And not being able to be in the starting lineup really affects me. Dealing with the stress during a game is something that you have to learn to balance because if you don't, it'll pretty much overcome you as an athlete. These factors can have an impact on mental health for athletes. Luckily, there are services available for college and pro athletes to use if they are suffering from depression in order to get them back in the game. Although depression is not commonly discussed in the athletic world, it is still important to keep in mind that underneath the equipment, when the athletes step off the field, they are still human beings and can experience depression. For Community Crossroads, I'm Emily Pratt. Today we'll discuss depression among athletes, starting with a panel um, to my left, or my right, we have Dr. John McCauley, who is a clinical psychologist and one of the U.S. Olympic sports psychologists. Then Grace Carricard, the executive director of the Gainley Foundation. And Dr. Duncan Simpson, a professor of sport and exercise psychology. Now Grace, you are the executive uh, director of the Gainley Foundation who works with getting the community aware of mental illnesses, specifically depression. So what is the most important thing that you um, educate the community about depression? Absolutely, we let people know that uh, major depressive disorder is a mental illness, which is considered a mood disorder. And what most people don't know is that it's a biological illness, just like diabetes or cancer, and it can affect your overall health as well as your ability to function on a daily basis and is accompanied by a number of symptoms which you may think of, you that sadness, uh, difficulty sleeping, uh, affected eating patterns, irritability, difficulty concentrating, and all of these symptoms tend to uh, inhibit that individual's function and affect them for more days than not out of a two-week period of time. Sure. So with that, that's kind of a general um, over sense of depression mm -hmm. that can happen to anybody in society, but when we're talking about athletes specifically, what are some of the um, specific factors that we saw in the reporter package um, mm -hmm. that can that contribute to depression for the athletes? Well, not only the pressure that they're experiencing, but I think what we need to really understand is that depression is not something that comes up in situations. We have within us the seeds of depression from our development. Um, Growing up, none of us get really what we need to, to blossom fully. So we all have some limitations, some restrictions. And these make us vulnerable to distress, anxiety, depression, other kind of mental difficulties throughout our life. And as we face particular developmental milestones, pre-adolescence, adolescence, etc., we respond emotionally according to our strengths and weaknesses. 
So, Dr. Simpson, you teach um, sports psychology to sports management students here at Barry University. What do you find is um, the most specific factors that contribute to such a stressful environment such as being an athlete, either a collegiate athlete, a pro athlete, or an amateur athlete? I mean, one of the, the key things, obviously, at the collegiate level is the balance between uh, academics and sport. And I think, um, depending on obviously which level, going from Division One to Division Three, they, they experience different kinds of pressures. But at the same time, they need to be able to balance the, the academics and, the, and the, the time demands that they have from their sport. There's a lot of pressure on them um, to achieve academically while still trying to achieve on the, on the, you know, the court, the field, wherever it might be. Sure, and Dr. McCauley, you've worked with athletes, you've worked with amateur, you've worked with pro, you are one of the sports psychologists for the U.S. Olympic team. Um, what have you found to be the, the most common thing that these athletes come to you for help with? Um, well, they come to me for help because something is interfering with their performance, something is getting in the way of their performance. And so I begin an inquiry and it usually ends up being something to do with some sort of emotional problems they're having that's interfering with their sports performance. For example, um, when I was practicing in Vermont, I was referred um, a number one tennis player, freshman, female, from one of the universities and she practiced well but whenever she got into meets she folded and through working with her it came down that she had some unresolved issues with her mother that had to do with anger and aggression and so she couldn't really tap her own aggressiveness to mobilize it in her sport and so she she inhibited herself to prevent the aggressive expression but by doing so it really crippled her tennis game once she was able to understand and talk through the anger that she had for her mother, it freed her on the court. Mm -hmm. So these, these factors are not just, like you just said, it's, it's, it was a family issue. It, that, that could also mm -hmm. contribute to an athlete. It's not just um, a, it, something that can affect performance. It's not just stress that's happening through school or through the pressure within the game. It could also, that's something that could contribute to depression for anyone in society. Absolutely, and depression is also something that uh, is biological, and it can also be uh, can also run in the family. So it's important to note that um, there's a, a, there's a lot of factors that that person might have internally, but there is also that combination of env environmental factors, um, as well as one's own psychology. You know, do they have negative self-talk going on? Is whatever they achieve never good enough? And what are those messages that they constantly um, tell themselves about themselves and their interaction with the world? So what are the specific signs that an athlete could show and that one, a coach or an athletic trainer or a sports psychologist could recognize that this individual may be suffering from depression? I'm not sure a coach or a trainer is going to, to do that. Uh, one, they don't have the training and two, they may have a bias to not see that kind of stuff mm -hmm. uh, because in athletic departments, mental health issues are, are um, are really not talked about and they're not encouraged to address. But you, any, any detriment in performance or any uh, loss of joy, any lack of enthusiasm in their life, you have to begin to take a look at them. And you just have to, I mean, you have to look at an athlete's immediate context because there's going to be triggers or issues in there that are definitely interfering, but you've got to always look at their history their entire life, their relationships with their parents, their girlfriend, their boyfriends, their, their interpersonal world, you really have to look at to, mm -hmm. to appreciate uh, the finer nuances of an athlete and to really help them resolve whatever they're struggling with. So once an athlete um, can be seen as showing some signs of depression or um, any kind of mental health issue, what, how does that affect their relationships with other people in their athletic world, such as their coaches and their other teammates? Well, I mean, I think, I think this is part of the problem with regards to the athletic departments and coaches, and it's not a case of, of blaming people, but sometimes the behavior, such as a, you know, a depressed person might, might feel a, a, a lack of motivation to participate, mm -hmm. withdraw from teammates, things like that, will be perceived by coaches as perhaps mm -hmm. a lack of effort or they're, they're, they're a trouble athlete or you know they'll um, 
teammate, teammates will just think of them as someone different or they're not friendly if, if they were drawing. So all of a sudden this athlete now feels even more isolated mm -hmm. and, and the coaches and, and, and teammates don't realize perhaps the issues. Mm -hmm. so, so it kind of manifests itself and it's, and it's not placing blame on those individuals, but I think it comes back to a lack of education. Mm -hmm. Right, and then it just keeps getting worse from there if, if there's no one to, to reach out to these athletes to, mm -hmm. to educate them about what their options are. So well, also, to make another point, it, it depends on the type of depression. I mean, depression mm -hmm. manifests itself differently, and sometimes the very causes of depression are different. So a, re a, a depressed athlete's relationship with coaches, peers, whatever, is going to depend on the underlying issue. Some depression is nothing but repressed anger, and they may be acting it out in a uh, passive-aggressive, uncooperative way, a fight with authority. So it could be an antagonistic relationship with a coach, or it could be just demoralized and withdrawn and depressed and saddened. Mm -hmm. So, Sure. So once the athlete has been diagnosed with depression, and I know you've, you've worked specifically with athletes um, who have had performance issues and um, mental health issues, what kind of treatments and what is the process that athletes can go through to um, rise above this or um, get better from it? Well, well there are a bunch of them. <laughs> so, yeah. um, medication, which uh, I take a very strong stance against. I, I don't think we should put people on medication, generally, most people. You can, uh, you can do some educational kind of work with them, like uh, help them understand how they think, help them understand the kind of cognitive distortions of which there are 10 or 12 of them, I'm not sure. It's really a list to be learned. And so an athlete can correct their own thinking, um, but ultimately my kind of work involves an exploration I into their psyche, into their emotional life, into their internal life to understand how they perceive the world, how they relate to the world, where their deficiencies are, where the damage is, what their perspectives are, how they cope, mm -hmm. how they handle. And oftentimes, even if people do take that first step to seek the help of a therapist, they may say, oh, it didn't work for me, I didn't get along with them, and they may never go back. If I broke my arm, I would go back to, like, out the perfect path to take care of it and to treat it properly. Mm -hmm. And a lot, oftentimes, people will say, oh, I tried it, I'm giving up. And it's really important for people to be persistent and to continue to seek what form of help or what combination of treatment might work best for them. Sure. So what kind of, in order to educate um, athletes and n not only athletes but the community of the athletic world mm -hmm. in order to educate them about how important it is that everyone's aware of depression is in in athletics it's within athletes it, it, they're not immune to it mm -hmm. what kind of programs are available I know that at the Ganley Foundation we provide a number of educational programs uh, in hopes to raise awareness and to educate people so they can recognize certain symptoms. Oftentimes peers will be the first to notice that their friend might be withdrawing or acting weird. Parents might pick up on things too, but it can be very fine line between discerning whether it's typical teen behaviors or something more serious such as depression. Uh, so uh, I know that's one of the, some of the efforts that we do and I know a lot of schools have counseling departments that can work with their students uh, on all levels from elementary through college. Great. Well, we're going to take a break right now, but when we come back, we'll sit down with a former athlete and discuss about his athletic experience and the struggles that he underwent. There's a movement afoot. Let's move together! Arthritis is America's most common cause of disability. Walking just 30 minutes a day can ease joint pain, improve mobility, and stop the progression of the disease. Start moving now to prevent and control arthritis. And let's move together to raise funds for a cure. Join the movement and participate in the Arthritis Walk in your area. Log on to letsmovetogether.org and start moving. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Malcolm, you do know that energy savers last six times longer than ordinary light bulbs. This isn't my room. 
it's, it's Baron Davis's. Baron Davis, the basketball player? This is his room? Yep. Interesting, because we have Baron Davis right here. Baron, do you live here? No. I don't mean that, Baron Davis. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? Did you uh, get a call from the coach about those kids who were caught drinking? Not our guys. They know better. Yeah. They know better. Heads up, sport! Real kids are curious about alcohol. 40% tried by the 8th grade. Talk early, talk often, get others involved. We're back, and now we're sitting down with Ryan Saunders, who is a former athlete for Barry University on the men's basketball team. So, Ryan, you played all four years of your collegiate experience on the men's basketball team. So, tell me a little bit about that experience. I had a great experience, you know. Uh, first of all, I wanted to go to college to play sports. I saw myself, uh, you know, getting a degree while playing, uh, playing basketball. So, I was very fortunate to get, to get a scholarship to do so. And uh, I had a great experience. I had a solid four years where I was able to, to come in. I, I played uh, in every game. And uh, I think we had two of the, the better, probably two of the best seasons in school history. So uh, I had a great experience. Sure. And so along your four years of playing college sport and going to school, did you come across any struggles or hardships? Uh, of course you did. You know, there's ups and downs, you know, in every situation. It's different for every person. Personally, uh, go, going into my freshman year, right before our first uh, game, I, I injured my ankle and I was on crutches for about five weeks. I mean, I'm sorry, five days. And it was just frustrating. Um, you know, right before our first game uh, as a college athlete, you, you want to go and help your team. And at that time, I, even though I was a freshman, I was playing a significant role, starting role. And, um, you know, at, at first I, I was really frustrated that I couldn't be out there and there was a lot of anxiety. I, I just wanted to hurry up and get out there. And then uh, you know, throughout the four years, there's you know academics and uh, relationships and, and and different things that play a role, and, and it kind of uh, it affects how you how you play for sure. Uh, it definitely affects your your performance on the court. Right. So, were there any specific struggles that you experienced, whether it be um, sport related or you know performance related or external to the sporting world that really impacted your any part of your four years? I think my second year, um, just the relationships I carried off the floor uh, definitely played a role. Uh, I think if, if you look at it statistically, um, I think it was probably one of, one of my down years. Out, out of the four years, that was probably my down year. Uh, and I think a lot of that was, was due to the fact that I, I carried those relationships. And, and uh, you know, they were just unhealthy and, uh, you know, it, it really did play uh, who you draw and, and how I performed on the court. And, um, you know, I was able to bounce back, but at the time, you know, I was really frustrated. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of shut people out, and, uh, and and just was distant from a lot of my teammates. Which, and for me, that's not how I am. So it, there was a year that, that definitely, uh, you know, I wasn't myself. Right, and then within that year, with those experiences and those struggles, you obviously, like you just said, had a it kind of bled into your into your sport career and, and affected your relationship with your teammates, and which even off the court or on the court with them will we'll pay the price during the games and stuff like that and practicing. So how are you able to come back from that? Uh, you know, I coach, I coach now and, uh, you know, I'm able to see different, you know, how different students, you know, or student athletes, uh, you know, the things that they go through. And uh, I think it's very important as a coach uh, to be open enough with your players to, uh, you know, to speak with them about their issues. Uh, you know, we're not psychologists or or anything, but you know, just to be there to, to talk about issues and things that are affecting them. Uh, for me, I, I had a great head coach who, who was very open. I could, I could tell him anything and then uh, also have a good support system around your teammates because uh, sometimes you know, we're a lot of um, students from different areas, different countries, mm -hmm. um, and, and we're like a family. So if you can't talk to your, your teammates, who can you really talk to? So right. I, I was very lucky to, to be in a situation where I had a lot of good people around me. Well, is this, uh, this is probably a, an example of another cause or, or beginning of a depressive episode. I assume these relationships that you're talking about were troublesome for you and the results that you were depressed from them. 
that, that correct that correct okay so that so we can see that that depression can be stimulated by current situations mm -hmm. but I would imagine at some point in your life there's the issue of of your primary relationships because that's what would set you up or any of us up for difficulties in our current relationships so so you became depressed because you weren't re re reaching the I assume the person you were in a relationship with and right and and I as a student athlete you trying as best you can to when you step on the floor to focus on on basketball or whichever sport you're in but mm -hmm. I think in the back you still have whatever you're going through in the back of your head for me that relationship was in the back of my head the stress of it you know like I think someone touched on earlier not sleeping and um, you know th that all plays a, a huge role for uh, for student athlete for myself mm -hmm. and, you know. I think uh, sorry go ahead Oh, I just wanted to add, thank you, uh, that uh, it's important to know, just as you all mentioned, it can affect one's relationships, and of course we've discussed uh, athletic performance as well, but really performance is just about every area of our life and every relationship we have, including our relationship with ourselves, and, and I definitely want to just stress upon how serious depression can be when it goes untreated and it can, and undiagnosed, it can really be very serious and lead, uh, be life-threatening by leading to suicide. So uh, unfortunately, oftentimes people, you know, don't take it seriously. They believe that time will just allow it to pass. And, and for some people, that, that is true. But for other people, um, it does get worse over time, and it could be uh, life-threatening. And, and I think an important point from Ryan's case is, uh, is obviously um, that he seemed to suffer just, just ups and downs during the season, and, and sometimes you know athletes will go through that and that's and that's natural and you know they'll go through low periods which which not necessarily diagnosed as, as depression but the important point is that athletes are not immune athletes you know mm -hmm. athletes just like any other human being they're going to suffer through relationships financial issues somehow we, we put athletes on a pedestal that they shouldn't go through these things but athletes are obviously just human like everybody else and of course they have the same worries the same anxieties the same you know thought processes so it, it's really great that someone will come on and speak about these issues it's not just putting the athlete on on a pedestal also it's the fact that we are in denial yeah. we, we simply do not accept the fact that we are a species that's very vulnerable to depression and that every one of us through our lives will experience episodes of depression mm -hmm. and not only can it be a personal crisis as mm -hmm. you describe as where there's a suicide but the economic toll on this country from this country being depressed is astronomical I mean and you see it in, in diminished work performance you see mm -hmm. it in criminal acting out I mean depression is pervasive throughout this society society and it's costing us an incredible amount of money and manpower absolutely depression is actually the leading mental health illness that leads to disability uh, within our country so let's talk more about this stereotype that we've touched on um, and not only within the athletic world but depression overall mm -hmm. outside of the athletic world why is there such a stereotype and why is it being not treated and it's it it's going without treatment and becoming such a serious issue we have two defense systems within our body we have an immune response which takes care of viruses and bacterial infections and we have a psyche system that manages and takes care of our our mental health and one of the mechanisms in our psychic system is denial and so we absolutely can deny our problems. We can deny our spouse's problems. We can deny that there's any sort of mental health problems in us. And it's, and it's not that we're lying. It's that this is an unconscious mechanism that tries to protect us. But in its protection, it absolutely isolates us and leads us further into emotional turmoil. And I'll add that, that uh, depression, beyond depression, Mental health really isn't valued in our society the way it really should be. It should be valued equally with physical health. And uh, I, I think that's a big, strong message that people need to hear and really value it. And of course, people will hear that and say, of course. But how often do we practice what I would call good mental health mm -hmm. hygiene? How often do we find that social support? How often do we uh, find healthy ways to express our emotions? Uh, very seldomly. And we do see that effect uh, at large. And of course, having a mental health illness, there's a social implication. People will think I'm crazy. They'll think I'm weak. So that can create a barrier to people seeking treatment as well. Sure. 
So, Dr. Simpson, what specifically in the athletic world is also contributing to the denial that athletes may be having um, that are suffering from depression? Well, I think a lot of the time when, when I meet and talk to athletes, you know, they, they have a bravado or, a, or an athletic face, as, as, we'll, as I'll say. Well, they'll pretend that, you know, they're, they're tough, they can get through anything, they have this, they have to act in a certain way, whether it's to teammates, to coaches, but when you sit down with them, they're like, obviously, like every other person and to recognize that it's okay to recognize when we have weaknesses. Mm -hmm. It's okay to admit when we're struggling. It's okay to come and, you know, if you need to, is to open up and, and cry or to, mm -hmm. to go through whatever issues you're going through and to discuss them. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't do that, you know, it, it obviously just builds up. So with athletes, part of it is getting over these stereotypes that there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not a, it's not a weakness. Mm -hmm. The athletes need to, you know, mm -hmm. obviously feel comfortable to be able to talk to somebody who's qualified. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a person doesn't know they're depressed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, like, not knowing and, and unaware of what, what's going on with me and why is this happening and not reaching out to the people that may be um, available for them to, to get help is, is really hurting um, athletes and, and anyone in the community who's mm -hmm. depressed. So what now, how do we educate athletes and the rest of the community to become aware of depression? And you know, Ryan, you can touch base on this because you are a coach, you're actively involved, um, much, much like everyone else in, in athletes and other members of society. How do you educate and make sure that everyone's aware that depression is a serious issue and mm -hmm. can be treated and needs to be treated? I think it's just important to to let the student athletes know or the athletes know that, that there's a, a ton of support around you mm -hmm. uh, in the different areas you can go to, whether it's uh, a friend, a teammate, a coach, uh, or, or the, the different uh, departments you have, you know, for instance, here at Bear University, the, the sports psychology department. Um, I think it's just important, um, you know, a lot of student athletes don't realize that there is so much help around you. And I think the more that we uh, reach out to, to student athletes, I think it's, it definitely, uh, definitely will help them. Sure. And I think, uh, Emily, we need to talk about it. I mm -hmm. think that's, that, and that's what we're doing here today. We need mm -hmm. to talk about it because it's, you know, if we don't talk about it, it's like the elephant in the room. Okay. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today, but I'd like to thank you all for being on the show thank and you. join us next time on Community Crossroads. Bye.